Prayer Before Mass In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, I approach the sacrament of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. I come sick to the doctor of life, unclean to the fountain of mercy, blind to the radiance of eternal light, and poor and needy to the Lord of heaven and earth. Lord, in your great generosity, heal my sickness, wash away my defilement, enlighten my blindness, enrich my poverty, and clothe my nakedness. May I receive the bread of angels, the King of kings, and Lord of lords, with the humble reverence, the repentance and love, the purity and faith, and the determined purpose that will help to bring me to salvation. May I receive spiritually the sacrament of the Lord's body and blood and its reality and power. Loving Father, as on my earthly pilgrimage, I now receive your beloved Son under the veil of the sacrament. May I one day see him face to face in glory, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who are in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as a man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all of the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was a ruddy, a youth, handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance, the Lord said, 
There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your blessing, Father. The Lord be in your heart and your midst. We will pray this gospel of your will in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. 
But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such things? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight, until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he see now? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner, he replied. If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see me might see, those who do not see might become blind, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us here on this live stream of Mass over at St. Anthony's in Harlingen. 
those who are new to the stream uh, may wonder who is with me here is Deacon Michael Sellers, very good friend of mine from South Carolina. Uh, he was on retreat at the Basilica uh, while studying in Houston. And so while he was down here, uh, they extended his break. And so he's staying with me for the time being. And so we thank him for being here and for his help here at the Masses. Just three quick points. Um, the first is, the disciples asked Jesus about the man born blind and what sin was committed that this man was suffering. Why is this man suffering? Surely he must have done something wrong or his parents must have done something wrong. Why is there any suffering in the world? Surely someone has to be blamed for it. God is punishing somebody. And the Lord says that's not the case. It's not the case that this man or his parents had to have sinned in order for this suffering to come upon them. Our Lord shows us this in his own crucifixion. Our Lord, totally without sin, takes on the death of sinners. And he says this, that neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. As we reflect upon our own suffering, our own befallen of calamity, we ask ourselves, what did I do? What did we do as a nation? What did we do as a community or myself? What have we done? Surely this is something the Lord is giving us so that we can repent of our sins. That's always a good idea to repent of your sins. But this is not why we are suffering. We have this temptation, we have this suffering, so that the works of God may be made visible through us. The second point is that the Lord then begins to initiate his work in the blind man. And so without even asking if he wanted to be healed, the Lord spits in the ground, makes clay out of that saliva, and smears it upon the blind man's eyes. And he tells him to go and wash. Now consider this. If the blind man had chosen the way that he was going to be healed, I don't think he would have chosen to have mud made from saliva put on his eyes and then sent, again a blind man, to go find a pool, a specific pool, to wash his face. The stumbling around again, the sense of what will this do for me? How is this supposed to help me? But yet he goes because he is sent. And when he washes his face, he begins to see. Again, ourselves, in our desire to be holy, our desire to be good Catholics, our desire uh, to, that the Lord places within us to know him, to love him, to see him, to serve him here on this earth and forever in heaven. If we can choose the way that we are sanctified, I don't think we would choose certain things. We wouldn't choose to suffer the loss of loved ones, the diminishing of freedom. We wouldn't choose to suffer the fact that we cannot enter into church right now because of the risk of either virus or contamination uh, for my neighbor, or even for our priest, some who are very much um, in that vulnerable population. But the Lord does as the Lord wills, and he permits what he chooses to permit. And so is this a chance then for our own sanctification, knowing that we would not have chosen this way, that this is the way the Lord has permitted us and given to us? And the third, Having washed his face, having begun to see, people doubt whether he is actually that person. Are you the man who was born blind? And he says, I am. 
Now, in the Gospel of John, I am is a very loaded phrase. Our Lord says it mm, about 30 times. And he's the only one who says it. I am the gate. I am the light. I am the life of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. And he's the only one who says I am, except for this one man here. The man who is blind. The man who, once he is called to testify about who he is, he says, I am. Have you once been blind? Have you been healed by the Lord? Have you been found by Christ? He too, in a mystical way, becomes Christ. Another Christ for people. That again, as we heard last week, begins to point people towards Christ in the flesh. Here he is. Do you want to follow him? And so in our own lives here, as we are more and more uh, confined or more and more called to be home, how are we becoming Christ for other people? By rejecting blindness, by taking Christ's desire for us to be healed and to follow after him so that we too may become Christ for others, starting with those in our own home, starting with the person next to you, the person that you communicate with every day. During this Lenten season, we pray together the Apostles' Creed, the one used as the baptismal creed or symbol of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now raise our prayers to our Lord, who heals us and gives us light. For all God's people, that we recognize our blindness and repent, so Christ may heal us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For national and local representatives, that they consider the long-term effects of their laws, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who think their sins are unforgivable, that they turn to God with trust in his loving mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who walk in the shadow of illness and death, that your loving presence will be a source of nurturing comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And our attentions for this Mass are the repose of the soul of Francis G. Reyes, Ginger Farrell Olga Lopez, Rafael Escobedo, Maria Elena Luna, Robert Gonzalez, Jesus Cariaga, and blessings for Aida Erle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and love, you defend the poor and weak. Listen to our prayer and lead us out of darkness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, he will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, you will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth Sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Mario, his auxiliary Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or their offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of our Lord and Lord Jesus Christ, blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lords, Chrysostomus, John and Paul, Cassius and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the sublation of our service that I for whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count them among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve the song in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, O mighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, and assigned to your divine majesty. So all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Lister, Perpetua, Adip, and Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. I admit us to beseech you into their company, not weigh in our merits, but granting us your pardon to Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed with divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and the graciously grant for peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord anointed my eyes, I went, I washed, I saw and I believed in God. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Salutaris hostia, quecheli pandis hostia, bella premontos ilia, da Robert veros ilium, unicino que domino, sit sempiterna and everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements that we have. Um, at 12 p.m. there will be a Spanish Mass offered uh, again here. Also, tomorrow uh, the Mass will be at 5 p.m., Monday, 5 p.m. streaming. I'm also working on uploading these videos onto YouTube, even though I can't live stream. The 1,000 subscribers is one of the requirements they have, and I think there's maybe a waiting period before this actually finalized, uh, which is a bit frustrating for me as well. Uh, but we'll work on this and hopefully upload them to YouTube at least, even though we can't have them live, at least they'll be available on YouTube for those who uh, wish to watch them. Those who don't have uh, internet service, I know uh, hard to talk to someone who doesn't have it here because you're watching now, but if you don't have internet or your neighbor doesn't have internet, um, Channel 5.2, I believe, is streaming the, uh, is showing the Masses, uh, the Sunday Mass, uh, at 11 o'clock, 5.2 uh, on the TV. 
Also, um, many of you are asking about helping to donate. I, I, we're well aware of the practicalities of different things in terms of keeping the, the lights and insurance payments, all these other things. And those who wish to offer some sort of sacrifice uh, during this time. We do have a mail slot in the front door of the office of St. Anthony's. Also, you can mail in any envelope um, your donation if you'd like. There's also uh, an online giving option at www.cdob.org, CDOB, uh, Catholic Diocese of Brownsville, CDOB.org. On the top right, you will find a thing that says donate, go down to stewardship, and then begin that process of uh, setting up an account or just a one-time donation. And there'll be a drop-down menu to pick whichever church you like to donate to. Some of who are watching who are not part of St. Anthony's. And if you find your, your parish as well, uh, feel free to donate there as well. We thank you very much for your generosity and for your patience and prayers during this time. Pray. Um, don't go unless necessary. Find what you need and get back. And keep praying. These are always things that are helpful to us and for our own source of uh, life and light, which is our Lord. On these devices, when you're streaming as well, um, please try to set up a little home altar. You might have one already, um, but set up a little home altar, a nice little prayer space for yourselves. And if you could, please uh, send a picture uh, to us either at uh, our email or even just post a picture under the on the comments here. That way I can see. Uh, the beautiful arrangements you've made to have a nice little prayer space in your home. Thank you again and God bless. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. May mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all of evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls in heaven, especially those most need of thy mercy. St. Anthony, our patron, pray for us. The Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. The Sacred Heart of Jesus, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us.